All right, this is Doug Shannon, RPA Automation, Gen AI LLM for Enterprise Pro. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, Doug. Uh, let's see, I, I started uh, building on like AI spanning where you know companies are trying to figure out how to bring about Gen AI into automation. And that is AI spanning, like literally using your LLMs to prompt uh, on, in within and around and to actually trigger automation. So it gives you more of that human in the loop, yet still does with Gen AI. So there's a lot of value there. And you've been in the space for a while. You've been, you know, back when it was RPA. And the question that I get quite a bit now is, Manny, how is Gen AI for enterprise, Gen AI for automation different from RPA? So I'd, I'd love to hear your response to that. Yeah, so Gen AI is different than just RPA and just intelligent automation because Gen AI has the power of understanding like nuance. It has the ability to predict the next word using transformers, like all the classic stuff we've learned about Gen AI at this point. Um, you know, intelligent automation, even automation is tied into really driving the process, knowing the process, developing it out, and, and handling any of the ancillary items that are there. Gen AI comes into play back in with automation, like I mentioned, kind of like with AI spanning, and a lot of the stuff that we're going to start seeing with how these agents are coming into play now, and it's, it's becoming part of the zeitgeist and where everybody's going with it in the enterprise and small to medium-sized businesses. And my, my standard response is, you know, RPA was on the right track with the business value proposition, the use cases. It's just that with Gen AI and LLMs, it's just supercharged because of the ability for these LLMs to have more of a conversational interaction with users and also for their reasoning ability. So they're a little bit smarter than your traditional RPA implementations. Is that fair? That's fair. I mean, because automation in general has always been, you know, classic Band-Aid and it grew out of that, you know, some like odd, like five to eight years ago, doing more intelligent automation where they're driving more to like 40 to 80 percent of those processes that were hard to do and really bringing those back up. And so Gen AI gives that intelligence, gives that way for users to users and people just to kind of have those conversations and get information back. And so there's there's a lot of value in that. Gotcha. And. I guess, so if that's the case now that LLMs are supercharging traditional RPA implementations, does it necessarily follow that the folks that were prominent in the RPA space are also going to be big in the Gen AI space? I would say yes, if they change their mindset. Some some people, so just like with anything, right, new, new innovation comes out, new things are being driven into the space. Try to learn that space as much as you can and and really i think the automation leaders that are out there now if they adopt gen ai they see where it comes from see how it's been working and then they look at how that works with agents we've already been doing agents just in a different way a yeah. bot is very similar to how an agent works right a bot's functions or a process's functions work to tag in different kind of technologies different kind of applications different kind of platforms we understand that better than a lot of the ai guys that are here right. talking about how this works next i mean agentic workflows it's intelligent automation mm -hmm. with gen ai right let's drive that forward and let's really you know come together as like those multiple experts from different sides right. and really bridge the gaps great yeah and we're talking about ai agents now but in in the rpa world that crane over there oh look at that Beautiful crane. Can you see that? Ooh. Beautiful, wonderful here. Um, so I guess what you're saying is in RPA, AI agents was already a thing with bots. And now you have a new crop of Gen AI companies that are coming on the stage and talking about all things AI agents. Um, and my sense is that um, you think that the way that the current crop of Gen AI company startups that are positioning AI agents are going about it in um, in a less than optimal way. I, so the the main perspective I can provide here is that a lot of the hype and a lot of the innovation is coming from AI researchers. Mm -hmm. And these researchers are you know coming out of colleges, coming out of like brand new systems. They haven't always probably worked in a lot of the enterprise fields, and so. They may not always know how hard it is to work in the enterprise or how many legacy data, legacy systems, uh, legacy thought processes are in the, in, in, the, in the spin of that. So 
I'm, my perspective is from a practitioner in the enterprise, a practitioner that's done enterprise automation for years now and IT and kind of bridging those two gaps together while also doing my research and understanding where AI and Gen AI mm -hmm. is going and how that's going to evolve. Mm -hmm. What do you think this new crop of Gen AI researchers are going to get uh, tripped up on? Like what, what do you, have you been, having been a practitioner trying to integrate into these legacy systems, where do you think they're going to fall short? The probably where generally everybody falls short, right? So if we if we jump the gun and we say this is the new thing, you know, rag comes out, right? And like rag rag solves everything. Does it? No. It does it solve its purpose? Is it you know, is it going to retrieve and augmented generative you know documents and pull that? And then can you build that into an, a in a better way to actually do you know talk to your data? Like yes. Is there is there ways that that could be better? Yes. You know, could we be using vectorization? Could we be using these different tools to build it? Yeah. Some of these companies that were in the conference are 100% doing that. But don't always think that that's like the the silver bullet that's going to solve it all. The the work that the, the biggest point I could probably give back to everybody is the work's going to be hard. We all have to do it, and we all have to drive it forward and find the solutions together. If we don't, then we're going to have these splinter groups of just doing different things, and uh, people and enterprises wasting a lot of money to try to find the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And you also have an interesting framework um, that that I've seen quite a bit. Tell us about that. The intelligent automation enterprise, something to that effect. Yeah, the the autonomous enterprise, right, is essentially the way I describe it. It's uh, I, I'm talking to a lot of people here. It's not autonomous. Uh, the Thomas Enterprise is making it to where the, your humans are working with these bots. They're working in coordination with these like agents and bots uh, to the point of it's, it's also a multi-agent framework. So I talk about how co-pilots are going to evolve. You just heard about how Microsoft just recently said that. They're like, oh, hey, we're going to start taking screenshots. Yes, but it's going to evolve even more. It's going to be talking about process uh, you know, process mining, task mining, all of these co-pilots are going to be doing these things. And those are some of the important aspects of this. Mm -hmm. And then you have different agents that are involved that are going to be doing different tasks. Like I mentioned previously is that agentic workflows mm -hmm. is, is also being talked about here. Yet, agentic workflows are huge and it's going to slow down these agents so they're not going to be as fast. Right. So what we're going to get is we're going to see agentic come in to describe and help the AI side and the scientific side understand this process side of it and the process automation side and bridge them together. And they're going to say, it's too big. Let's break it out. Let's mm -hmm. build a multi-agent framework mm -hmm. where multiple agents do different things. Right. Um, some may describe that a little bit as like swarm technology. I don't always see it that way. I think everyone will have its certain tasks, certain certain like day in the light, have its uh, functionality. There's a lot of talk about expert agents, not here, but in the, in the space around us. And so driving those forward is, is really looking to be very exciting. That makes sense. So instead of having one monolithic agent, you might want to break that apart because it's going to be more performant. You have less yeah. LLM calls that have to happen, less orchestration that has to happen. I think you also might want to fine tune different agents for different tasks. Like yes. almost like you have like a boardroom of different agents, each yeah. bringing their own perspective, each having their own point of view and really like going to work for that point of view. That might kind of work there as well. Yeah, and that's a lot of what I talk about in the autonomous enterprise concept that I built out. I'll be speaking about that later tomorrow actually and I'll be speaking about it in Prague overseas and then a bunch of other places this year and so the plan is to get that out so that people can start to see at least the perspective that I have and then see how we can actually build towards that goal and, and the goal is really just to bring everybody together because that's that's the, the really where everybody wins awesome and it's a great pr place to leave it thank you Doug very much and where can people get in contact with you Doug best place and only place because that's the only time I have is LinkedIn so find me on LinkedIn Doug Shannon and I'll, I'll connect with you awesome thanks Doug